I want to acknowledge the fact that right now I'm sitting in the gallery at UB Blake Cultural Center, surrounded by the exhibition entitled Welcome to the Sauce, um, which is a collection of works by the Hot Sauce Artist Collective. Now, I want you all to close your eyes and picture this. You just moved to a new town. You're the new kid in school. You don't know anyone. Everyone you know is 100 miles away. You're wondering where you fit in with this new place. You want to know how things work around here. You feel subconscious. You're nervous. What do you think about when you picture this? The picture I get in my mind is one evening when I was in college. I was in a room where I was one of the only people that looked like me. Everybody else seemed to be from different backgrounds. We dressed different. They you know, we talked different um, from one another. And um, I felt very uncomfortable. I was out of my zone. I was feeling self-conscious. And I felt that way until a man asked me, he said, hey, what do you think about that? And he was talking about an art piece that I had been looking at for a couple of minutes. I was trying to escape the crowd from this art opening that I, that I went to for extra credit I was at my college's art gallery. Um, and when he asked me that, you know, I turned around and I started telling him about what I was seeing, which were these, these black silhouettes of soldiers and churches and children and uh, planes all juxtaposed on, um, on this background of all different shades of brown in the form of army camo. Um, and then, you know, we started talking about war and the, the role that we played in it and who's harmed and things like that. Um, and that was one of the most memorable conversations that I've had, not because of what we actually talked about, but because of how it made me feel. He, he made me feel comfortable in the space. Um, he made me feel like my opinion mattered and he helped me to see myself in the artwork. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I'm here today. And you know, I wanna be able to provide that for other black people that come into the space and um, in any space and you know, may, may not see themselves. The major theme in that story is normalcy. Now, normalcy is one of the most important intangible aspects of, of the visiting experience that a black run space can offer. You know, seeing other black people doing creative, innovative work, um, you know, working together with one another is something that can't be taken for granted. A, having a, a, a black run space, there's, there's gonna be an understanding of nuance, um, which brings a comfortability and approachability that puts people at ease. You know, when you're around people that have a similar cultural background as you, there's gonna be similar language being spoken and similar mannerisms. And you're gonna make references that people can understand um, you know, without you feeling like, like you have to explain it or you might be misunderstood or you might be reprimanded or you might tell a joke that doesn't land. I mean, could you seriously picture yourself having a, a compliment battle with someone that isn't black? Yeah, I'm doing good. How you doing? Fantastic. Fantastic. I hope you have a good day. Hope you have a better week. Mm, I hope your month is full of successful days and a lot of great ventures. I hope you just come up, brother. I hope your year is spectacular. Oh, you hope my year is spectacular? Yeah. You got something you want to say to me? You got something you want to say? You smell great. You smell great. What is that? Burberry, what you got on? Mm, I forgot. It smells expensive. It's just deodorant. Okay. Yeah. I always think about the different dynamics of the, the characters on the Steve Harvey show as an example of black normalcy in the professional world. For those of you that, that might remember the show, the four black leads were in a professional environment, working together in a school, and in the majority of their interactions, they didn't have to worry about their blackness. The language and mannerisms that they used with one another created a cohesive working environment. They spoke to each other naturally, not having a code switch. They joked around with each other as well as being honest with one another, um, you know, without fear of offending anyone. 
feeling safe within your environment and having these sorts of relationships with peers makes it a lot easier to come to the table with conflicts and other difficult conversations. It also makes brainstorming a lot easier. Being able to bounce ideas off of people that come from a similar background as you, um, you know, it, it can make the collaboration process a lot easier. Um, you know, ideas can, can expand and formulate and come to fruition a lot quicker without uh, a cultural barrier. And not that cross-cultural collaboration isn't important or that it's not necessary, but we find a lot that in the fine art space, black voices, you know, when, when black people come to the table and you know, they provide their ideas, we see a lot that people that don't come from the, that don't identify with the black experience, they can steamroll ideas uh, because there's a, a certain, because they wield a certain power or um, they, they don't see the value in black voices um, or, or black ideas and you know, especially for a, especially for a black creative, that could be demoralizing, especially in a space where you may already feel invisible. I mean, I know I've felt this way in the professional world. You know, sometimes you feel like a guest in the fine art world, or that you don't fully belong. And that's because a lot of times, you aren't really meant to feel like you belong. I mean, a lot of, a lot of spaces don't take, don't take black opinions into account. You know, the, the art on the wall doesn't, doesn't reflect your experience, or the, 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 you don't see people that look like you in the classes, or the performances that they book, you can't resonate with them. I kind of think about it like being a kid and going to you know, your friend's house for the first time. You know, you, you go in there, you want to be polite, everything's nice, you don't want to touch anything, mess anything up, you know, you're, you're kind of on guard. And we see that translate into a lot of interactions in, into adulthood. You know, as, a, as a black person, a lot of times you have to think about your mannerisms and your body language and the conversations that you have so that you don't offend anyone or you don't you know, make anything awkward. Um, and that can be stifling. But in a lot of black run spaces, you don't have to do that. The freedom that a black creative can get from working in a black space and what a, black, what a black space can offer, we see it come up time and time again as we dig deeper and deeper into the history of a lot of prominent black creatives that we, that we now know. Look at Mark Bradford and Titus Kaffar. Some of their first shows took place at the Studio Museum in Harlem. Some of Kehendi Wiley and Micheline Thomas's first shows took place at Rush Gallery in New York City. Let's go back in time and look at black run spaces that have been doing this sort of work since the 1940s, like the Southside Community Art Center in Chicago, giving platforms to some of our master artists like Charles White and Gordon Parks. Throughout time in this country, black run spaces have served a purpose of trying to balance out the inequities within the art world. We hear the term representation matters all the time. And yet, in the art world, we don't see much of it. A 2019 study found that the art created by black artists makes up less than 2% of major museum collections. Another study found that black artists are only shown in about 8% of museum exhibitions. And museums are supposed to be our most trusted, highest pedigreed institutions when it comes to preserving history and culture, yet all, our stories are all but erased. So what's that tell you about the rest of the art world? You know, we're severely underrepresented in the field as a whole. You know, only 4% of curators are black. And that is where black run spaces come in. We value and prioritize black art and black artists differently. And through that prioritization, we make it comfortable for black people of the diaspora to come in and tell their stories. Akia Brion Brown, a young woman hailing from New Orleans, can use found objects and fabrics to explore her lineage and self-identity in her show, Jambalaya. Gabriel Amida Amina can visualize his interpretations of 
what it's been like for him immigrating to this country from Nigeria during his show Embodied. Jewel Ham gets to expose us to the importance of mental health with her show Seduction of Self-Destruction. And Brazil's own Zé Palito gave us an illuminated uh, version of black bodies in these uh, scenes of luxury and happiness during his Tropical Diaspora exhibition. Not to mention the numerous group shows that we've had here that showcase a variety of black thought, perspective, and history. Black run spaces have the ability and responsibility to expose the public to what black artists are doing. Not only because the majority of art institutions aren't doing it, but because it's important to the history of fine art. Black art needs to be seen and black artists need to be able to showcase their work in a place that appreciates them. Now understand that appreciation goes further than just giving black artists a space to exhibit their work because, you know, anyone can do that. When installing one of the shows here at UB Blake Cultural Center, I was thanking the artists for accepting the invitation to come and have a show here. And they responded and they said, you know, of course, I love it here at UB Blake. I've been turning down a lot of white-led organizations that have been offering me shows because I feel like they don't value me. And you know, here I feel like I'm valued and that I'm home. That conversation really resonated with me and it reminded me of why it's so important, the work that we're doing here. What we offer is, is more than just space for artists to, to exhibit their work. We can offer professional development experiences that they wouldn't get otherwise. For example, in, for a lot of the shows, the artists are designing the flyers, they're helping us install, they are documenting the shows, they're getting outside experience that they might not get otherwise. Um, and then we also make ourselves available. I, I, I make sure that I'm available for any artist development. For example, I've, I've helped many artists write their first invoice or um, format their resume or their CV or write about their work. And then it goes beyond that. We have to make sure that everyone stays connected. So we make sure to stay connected with the, the collectors and the professors and the other art professionals so that even, even when we're not working directly with a black artist on a certain project or endeavor, we're making sure that we keep them connected to everything that's going on in, in the art world. Because again, a lot of black artists are overlooked for these opportunities and these connections. And so it's our job to make sure that we're doing this, you know, make sure that we're providing these opportunities that can help black artists um, be sustainable, have a sustainable presence, have a sustainable career. All of this is not necessarily normal. Most of the time when you're working with an organization, you come in, you do your show, you do your event or your workshop, and then you, you go on about your way and they say, you know, thank you and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll call you next time, we need you. Um, you know, but so being able to, to do what we do here, it, it's valued differently, it's looked at differently and it leads to, and this is probably the most important thing I'm gonna say, is that it leads to empowerment. And empowering artists to create work freely and explore themselves in the world around them and to push boundaries should be the ultimate goal of an art institution that is looking to have art shape culture and essentially change history. But how do we get there? And how do we know we've gotten there? Well, one of the ways to ensure that we get there is to continue to preserve our history. Reginald F. Lewis Museum has been doing this by showcasing our icons in their exhibition programs such as the Elizabeth Catless Artists as Activists exhibition and the Maryland Collects Jacob Lawrence exhibition. UB Blake Cultural Center has the UB Blake Room with different objects that tell the story of UB Blake's life and successes. You know, the room contains these performance programs and flyers that highlight his work with other icons such as Josephine Baker and Billie Holiday. You know, one of the first steps towards empowerment is knowledge of self and a knowledge of one's history. Black Run Spaces play a huge role in telling our stories throughout history and reminding our people that 
they can see themselves amongst greatness. It's reasons like this that artists feel empowered to turn down other institutions and to work with us because we create an atmosphere where people know that they will be accepted and supported by the people that look like them, by their community. UB Blake once said, pay the thunder no minds, listen to the birds. Well, black run spaces are those birds because we show that black artists matter and that we have their back. Thank you.